Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and this video is about two and a half months late. Uh, this is the gear video for my end of the year build for 2020, my smart gun. Uh, I did the internals video, and obviously I had the whole running around shooting video, uh, which was a lot of fun. Today I'm going to talk about the gear. There was a lot of gear that went along with this blaster. I couldn't just build the blaster. Um, because I, I'm, I'm me, and I like to go all out, and I really wanted to have a really cool loadout that went along with this, rather than just having the blaster itself. Um, similar to, you know, with um, Tear, when that one came out, I had the whole loadout and the whole, all the shebang, and that's why it went big. This one, I want to do the same thing. And it kind of, a lot of what ended up happening was the result of me wanting to someday actually use this for cosplay. I would love to actually go to a convention, a sci-fi convention, with this loadout, though it would probably need to be a little bit augmented here and there, and I do have some improvements I want to make. But, as it is, it's not bad. Now, I knew I wanted to make the, the blaster as screen accurate as I could, uh, and still be functional. That was, of course, the big limitation to this whole thing, was that it needed to be a functional blaster. And I wanted it to be a very high-powered blaster. I could have actually made it more accurate if I'd made it fire darts rather than rival, because I could have had a smaller barrel, and I wouldn't have needed the proton pack, and I, yeah, yeah. There's lots of things I could have done. But I decided I wanted to make it a proton, pine black, or proton pack blaster because it really needed to be. It needed to have that kind of firepower because of what it is. Uh, so that's why I did end up going with a proton pack. Um, but there was a lot of gear that went along with that. Obviously, I had to have the um, Steadicam rig, the vest that, that holds it all up, uh, is uh, very central to the whole loadout. Uh, and then I, I decided to go to add more armor. Now, I said in my video that the smart gunners didn't wear armor, and of course I ended up getting a cascade of pedantic comments about, well, technically they had a, a breastplate. And, yes. Yes, there was a breastplate built into the chest rig, but they didn't have the shin guards, they didn't have shoulder armor, and they didn't have helmets, they didn't have a backplate. Uh, they didn't have all of that, and being the heavy that I am, because I am not a svelte individual, I wanted armor. Uh, and I always knew that I wasn't going to be able to do a screen-accurate full loadout. I, the, getting a fully like screen-accurate space uh, colonial marine... Uh, is incredibly expensive. The pants has to be custom made because it's not a camo pattern that ever actually existed in any military. Um, the, the the molds for the armor is all very expensive and, and, and all of that. And technically, since I was doing the, the smart gunner, I didn't have to have all of the armor because other than the breastplate that's built into the chest rig, they didn't wear the rest of it, which would have made that a little bit easier, but again, sourcing the boots, sourcing all of that, I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to, and certainly not in the time frame that I had. And so I decided to go instead with something that looked like it could exist in the same universe. Uh, so it wouldn't be, say, Colonial Marines, it might be a police force, or a private security force, or um, Black Ops, or Spec Ops, or something. Uh, but something that could very definitely have existed in that universe, given what we'd seen in the movies. Uh, I didn't want to go too uh, far into the future, and I didn't want to go too far back. I wanted it to be right around in that same area. So the armor I designed was was modeled after the the, ch the chest plate that they wear, which was very angular. Though I made mine cover a lot more, and I did go ahead and make um, shoulder plates, um, which are really very simple. They are a single sheet of metal that I simply made a cut, two cuts on it, and then bent it in on itself until I could put in a couple of rivets right at the top, uh, which is also where the shoulder strap is, which is just Velcro. There's Velcro straps that go along the shoulder that this can lock into. And then um, a strap to hold it onto your upper arm. A um, couple of rivets that are holding that in also hold a Velcro strip to allow me to put patches if I wanted. And then one has the X-Strike logo, the other has train, has the, the cruise hourglass because I like those. Um, so that's how the, the shoulder is very, very simple. This, I could have made this out of a single piece of metal, but I didn't have a piece of metal large enough. Uh, and so I did end up um, riveting in, splicing in the, the side plates here, as well as the, the side plates that are on the side here. But they're just, this is all just one big piece that's been bent and riveted. Um, it rivets and bolts into the, the original um, rig, the chest rig, it is in fact 
screwed in on the top to the same place that the shoulder straps went in, and it's screwed in here where the, the arm actually attaches. So it is very thoroughly permanently attached. Um, use just simple small arm ring rivets from back when I used to make armor all the time. Uh, still had the tools and all of that. Hadn't done it in forever. Uh, but that's how that went. I then added the groin protector from one of the uh, suits of armor that I've been sent by NF Strike or uh, Tactical X-Men, or I think it was Tactical X-Men who sent me this one. Uh, just because it, it brought it together and because they did actually have groin protectors, just not ones with rigid plates. I decided to go with the rigid plate one. I thought it looked good. Um, that's that bit. I then got some new shin armor. The, the armor that I had wasn't bad, but it didn't go all the way around the leg. And the Colonial Marines armor did. And I wanted ones that did, and so I went looking, trying to figure out well, could I add stuff to my current ones. And then I stumbled across these, and it's actually snake bite armor. I found it on Amazon of all places. It's a single piece of plastic that just is molded and then just goes around your leg. Um, and it's just so you can walk around in you know, tall grass where there might be rattlesnakes or something and, and not die when they bite you in the leg. Um, I then did add a single buckle on the bottom because otherwise they, they didn't form very well. They kind of looked stove pipey and didn't really shape well. Um, but by simply adding that so it holds the, the bottom tight uh, they ended up looking absolutely great. I love how they came out. Uh, they were glossy. I hit them with a matte finish so they weren't quite so shiny. And I love how they came out. Um, there is, of course, the support arm, which is just a steady cam arm. It's spring-loaded. I should, at some point, get around to adding some shrouds over it just to make it look a little bit more heavy-duty because they did that in the movies. Um, Theirs doesn't really, theirs kind of didn't go up and down much, and that's probably because, you know, they were carrying actual MG42s, which weigh, like, 26 pounds. Um, mine is, I think, 6 pounds, um, so it's much, much lighter, uh, and I had to, you know, dial down the springs and use the lighter springs to get it to, to weigh properly, but it, it works beautifully. Um, back to the armor. The, this armor is made out of just really thin, it's like 24 gauge metal, 20 gauge metal, something like that. Very, very thin. You don't need to heat it up to use it. It is very, very flexible. Um, but I wanted to make it out of metal as opposed to like EVA foam because this, if this thin, it's probably about the same weight as EVA foam, honestly. And quite frankly, metal looks more like metal armor than foam ever will. You'll never make foam armor that looks as real as metal armor does. It, it, it's just because it it's just the nature of how it works, the way it looks. And this is definitely weathering better. You can see where the paint is chipping off and scraping off, especially where the arm goes in. And it looks, it looks really, really good. I'm absolutely thrilled with how it came out. Um, for cosmetics on the armor, I do have some graffiti. Apparently that was a big part <coughs> of, the, uh, of the movie. They were all given their, their gear and then given a whole bunch of stuff to, to decorate it with, make it theirs, to make it look like, you know, this is stuff they've been fighting in and using and it's, it's personally theirs. So, uh, across the front I have Vos Volo Bellum, Vos Adepto Bellum, which is the crew's motto. It roughly and inaccurately translates to, if it's war you want, it is war you will get. It more directly con translates to, you want war, you get war, and is not properly conjugated because we're mercenaries, not Roman senators. Our Latin is a bit iffy. I then, on the side here, have murder, because it's funny. Um, haven't done anything to the shin guards. I probably will. I do want to get more detail, more graffiti, but I want that to be something that I add as I go, so maybe something that I pick up at a con that I wear this at would get added in, or if I actually wear it to an event like Afterworlds, I might try to get some kind of a trophy to add to this, and have it be an organic decoration as opposed to um, you know, made a artificial. I, I prefer things that weather naturally. I prefer things that have meaning. So uh, that's where we're going with that. The shoulder flashlight, uh, I got the files for on Etsy from April Storms Props. Link will be down in the description if you want to get your hands on one. Uh, it printed out fairly well. It wasn't, it was designed to be printed as a prop less and not necessarily functional. I had to make some alterations to the file to be able to actually have it articulate uh, and then uh, in order to actually get the light in it, but it wasn't too bad. It didn't take a whole lot of modification and it does work. Uh, I, I've just got a, a simple switch right here for now. Eventually I plan to replace the fake switch. Let me come in a little bit closer. 
or maybe not. Now you can't see it. Um, there's what's supposed to be the on switch right there, but I didn't have a switch that big, so I put in a little bitty switch here. I eventually want to replace that and have that be the on switch. And this one, the flashlight I ended up using, has high beam and low beam. And I'd like this to be the high beam, low beam uh, swapper. Um, they were designed to hook on to the um, infantry shoulder armor, or their, their back plate had a, a hook that this little, or had a, a ring, a, a slot, whatever, that this would hook onto over their uh, left shoulder because they were all right-handed. Um, being left-handed, I'm of course having it on my right shoulder because that's the shoulder that's forward. And it just, I have it strapped directly to the backpack because uh, I don't have a back plate. Um, because there was no need for one because there was a backpack in the way. Uh, and so there wasn't anywhere for me to mount it the way they did, and so instead I mounted it to the backpack itself. Uh, and it actually works quite nice. I do have a GoPro mount point right there, so I can have my little GoPro session mounted right underneath it, so I have an over-the-shoulder camera. That is pretty nifty. Uh, let's see, next thing, uh, let's talk about, well, let's see. Some of you may have noticed there's a hammer shot on the table, and that is because I uh, picked up a narrow base holster. I needed, uh, I wanted a sidearm, and originally I had a, a double shot uh, because I had a really nice looking holster for it, but somebody contacted me and requested that I get one of these to review it. Um, for anyone who is curious, they are fantastic. Uh, it's beautifully printed, it is as small as you could get, and yet absolutely solidly locks that in place. Uh, it's actually currently a little too locked in place, as it's actually difficult to draw uh, but I imagine that will wear down with time and it won't lock in quite so tight. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a much nicer sidearm than what I had before. Uh, and I, I like it, so that's what's going on there. Get you that one. Alright, let's talk about the headset, because this is one that probably has a lot of people's interests peaked. Um, a couple people noticed it. Yeah, it's got some ridiculous greebling. I don't remember what this thing is called, but I remember people correctly. I think it's a... a rangefinder or an indicator for guided missiles or something like that. Uh, it's got an acronym. I'll get a thousand people who will comment it. Aren't you smart? Um, but I needed something. I needed some, some greebles in order to make this look appropriate. I couldn't find 3D printed files for, the, for what they wore. I'm sure somebody has one, but for the life of me I couldn't find it. If any of you out there know where I can get the files to 3D print a proper smart gunner heads up display, I would love to print one. Uh, but I have an old um, action cam that I bought early on when I had no money and could only get poor quality action cams, and so I ended up with this. It doesn't work anymore. The battery died after about five uses, and there are no replacement batteries for it. Um, eventually, I would like to replace that with an actual functioning um, heads-up cam so that I can have a camera over my shoulder as well as a camera aimed at my head so you can kind of see what's directly in front of me, but if I turn my head, you can see what I'm looking at, and I'll have multiple angles, and it would be much nicer. I also then have a camera on the blaster, though I can't see with the heads-up display and record with that at the same time very well. It tends to freeze. Um, but the heart of the thing, well, the thing is made out of an old World War II um, head, um, um, microphone head, uh, earphone setup, um, and I've mangled it horrifically. I've added just a bit of aluminum bar with an old uh, <laughs> Uh, men gun dart on there to to look at, like the microphone and then what was the original microphone I have flipped up to look like it is part of the monocle set up and then cheekily tucked in behind all of that I have a Vufine heads-up display uh, which then this cable that's coming off of here goes to the camera on the smart gun and that is how that all works so you can google Vufine look it up on Amazon and get yourself one, and then any camera that has HDMI in, you can view whatever the camera sees directly to your, your heads-up display. So that is how that works. That's what allows me to shoot around corners and see exactly what the blaster is pointing at. It's pretty nifty and horrifically un, uh, <laughs> unfair and uh, unnecessary, and I love it. Alright, where are we? Uh, the backpack. So the backpack itself was made out of a random piece of luggagey looking thing I found at Goodwill. Uh, I then made the tank that's in it out of a uh, Sterilite storage bin. Just cut up the bin, taped it all together, glued it together, 
Um, I think this was the lid from a jar of uh, pecan clusters, turtles, pecan caramel clusters. Um, but I needed I needed a way to be able to put ammo in it. Uh, it's then the the out of darts um, version six agitator and a uh, a newer um, Coleman air mattress pump, and uh, that's how it works. This agitates the rounds, and and then the the blower puts pressure in the tank, and the balls flow out of this through the hose into the blaster. They're they're actually remarkably simple, and now. They're finally available to the public, and you can get whatever the latest iteration is. I'm working off of a version that's like two or three years old. Train! Uh, that's the backpack. The reason this video took so long was that I was changing how it attached to the vest. That is a noisy one. Let's zip this up. The internals are, in fact, freely floating. They can simply be removed, which is good and bad. But it attaches to the back plate of the vest, mostly via magnet buckles that I was sent by Sergeant Armour, who, in addition to providing that, is the one who informed me that the blaster that I needed to make this whole thing was already, already existed. Uh, so yeah, this is the back part of the vest. Uh, it clips on, obviously, to inside up here to, on the shoulders and on the sides and that's what holds the whole thing onto you. I then have added these magnet buckles um, that are really, really slick and easy to... It all just magnets in. I then did add a couple on the bottom just to give it a little bit more stability on the bottom. Anyhow, that, I, I literally sewed that on just before filming the video, uh, before it had been attached in a very uh, hinky way. It was not easy to get the backpack on and off, and uh, in order to be able to tinker with things, I needed to be able to take the backpack on and off easily, and now I can, so. Magnets! They're cool. I, I intentionally didn't cover this one in Molly like I did tears because that was a pain to do. This one would be a lot easier because it's soft shelled and all of the internals come out and it's, it's much easier than the hard shelled tank that uh, tears is. A lot of that was hand sewing. This one I could probably do it mostly with a sewing machine. Um, and I have added some just sticky back velcro on a panel here. I may add some. I don't know how much I want to add or where I want to add it. I kind of like to add some on the side. Um, just so that I can put a, a shotgun holster there just because you want a shotgun for close encounters. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, in addition to the sidearm. Uh, so, yeah, obviously this was a very complicated project, a very uh, long in the planning, many, many years in the planning, really, and then a few months of frantic excitement to finally get it built. Um, but I am very, very pleased with how it all came out. Things that I would have done differently... Um, I might have tried to add, honestly, a little bit more color. Uh, like I said, I intended this for cosplay purposes, which is why the blaster was made as, you know, screen accurate as I could make it. It's obviously all black. I put the orange tip on there just for, you know, minimum safety. But I wanted to be able to take this to a con as a cosplay, and so it needed to be... It needed to pass the five-foot rule, which it very, very definitely does. From five feet, you couldn't tell that this was a Nerf blaster. Um, it's... It, I'm very, very pleased with how it came out. Um, I am tempted to print new copies of a lot of the parts. Uh, like the, the support struts and various other parts and shrouds and make them orange so that it would be a lot more bright colors and I wouldn't be quite as worried to take it to an event. But honestly, I would probably never even try to take it to something like an HVZ or a public Nerf War because it's, it's not for that. Um, it, it's not a practical blaster for an HVZ and it's not a practical blaster for a Nerf War. Uh, it would be much better suited to something like Afterworlds. 
uh, or possibly Ragnar Oktoberfest if you were playing the boss or, you know, an NPC character where that level of absurdity fits and isn't out of place and is in a, an environment where it's not going to cause um, concern or, or scare anybody. Um, but, yeah, uh, I am... I'm, I'm going in both directions. I'm wanting to do more cosplay stuff, which is going to be leading to more realistic-looking stuff for a lot of things, and at the same time, I agree with the movement and the hobby of let's get away from the all-black stuff and move towards more color. That's why I went with the orange camo pants that I got on Amazon, um, and that's what I'll be wearing at any future events I go to. I want to get more orange in my loadout. Um, my wall has been getting more and more orange. Earlier my stuff was black with orange accents, now I'm going for orange with a few black accents. Um, just because, yeah, it, it, it looks better for the hobby. I mean, my loadout for Tear was absolutely terrifying from the certain perspective, and that is, of course, why Hasbro doesn't like me. I'm scary. And I, I haven't helped that image with this loadout, unfortunately, uh, but I am, I'm working towards that. So, yeah, there will be more colorful stuff, more silly stuff. I, I like doing both both aspects, both being you know the super serious, the the top of the line mercenaries who really know what they're doing, the the, the really tough guy stuff, and then I like being an absolute goof, uh, and that's what I love about this hobby is that it allows us to do both, um, sometimes at the same time, and somehow it still all works out. So, okay, that that was the gear for my smart gun. Video. If you have any additional questions or, or want to know about sources, let me know. Some of the stuff I can tell you, some of the stuff I can't. Uh, I have no idea what it all cost. Um, not as much as you'd think. I was able to source a lot of it, like from Goodwill, or I got the the the, the most expensive part was, of course, the uh, the Steadicam rig. Um, but that I got used on eBay, so even it I got for I think half its market price. Um, a lot of the tools, that's really one of the more expensive parts, is tools, and I already had a lot of the tools for, I already had a sewing machine and all the rivets and anvils and hammers and all of the drills and, and everything, and knew how to make armor and all of that, but um, I hadn't done it in a long time, and oh, it was so much fun to be making armor again. I've got to start doing that again. Um, so, alright, if you have any questions, let me know. Let me know what you think, and thank you guys for watching.